Hi, this is Erin Martin for BiteWiser.com and this will be a Photoshop CS5 tutorial. This will be very basic tonight. We're just going to go over what the tools do. Now I typically use um, Photoshop for photography, basic logo design, and template design. So I will be coming at it from that angle. Um, tonight we will not be going over actions or layers. Um, we're just going to start off with what the tools do and some basic functions. Um, some of the tools, what they do, it may not make a lot of sense why or how you would use them in photography, but as we go over more and more tutorials, um, I promise it will become more clear to you. So we're just going to skim the surface tonight. Photoshop is an amazing program. It has a lot of power, so you'll just, it's one of those things you just have to be patient and, and learn over time. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let's see, we're going to start here with this tool. Now, on these little, these are your, your tools here, and on these buttons, whenever you see this teeny tiny little triangle in the corner, that means that if you right click, there are other tools in here. See this J here? That means that if I press J on my keyboard, it will take me to that tool. So um, let's say I'm on this tool and I hit J, I'm right back up here. So that's a handy dandy little trick. Let's start with the spot healing brush. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this picture. I'm zooming in by hitting control and plus. And I'm going to go over here. Now I can go up and down by um, the wheel on my mouse. And if I want to go side to side using the wheel on my mouse, I can hit control and it'll take me side to side. So that's kind of handy. Okay. So we're using the spot healing brush. Basically what that does is I have this little, little blemish here. If I click on it, uh, Photoshop automatically takes the area around the brush and blends it in so that it takes care of that blemish. Pretty amazing tool. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning before that. Now this is your history pane. If you ever want to just start over and go back to the beginning, all you have to do is click on the very first thing here. This will take you back to what the picture looked like when you opened it. So that's also very handy. Okay, now I'm going to show you how the healing brush tool takes care of the exact same blemish. Difference between the spot healer and the healing brush. With the healing brush, I actually have to pick the source that I want to match. So, to give you a for instance, this is a piece of good skin here. I'm going to hit Alt, and I'll get that target, and I'm going to left click. And now I'm going to take it over here. It gives me a preview of what it's going to look like, and I'm going to click over that blemish, and it automatically blended it with what I picked over here. So, took care of the blemish in a different way. Still worked. And I'm going to go back to the beginning and show you what the patch tool does. Now the patch tool isn't a brush at all. I'm actually going to circle my blemish and you see this area here is selected and I'm going to drag it to an area of good skin and boom it blended it in. And I can click anywhere to deselect blemish is gone same way. Now depending on the situation one tool may be better than the other. It just kind of depends. I'm going to go back to the original image now. We'll um, left click here. And then you have your red eye tool. Obviously I have no red eye and in my other image <laughs> I have no eyes. So I can't exactly show you how that works but it's pretty obvious. Uh, the little cross here you would just click on where you have the red eye and it would fill it in with, with black. Um, usually it works very well. Not always perfect but usually pretty good. Okay, the brush tool. Brush tool gets used a lot in photography. Um, if you're very new to photography and or Photoshop, it might be kind of hard to understand why. Um, because why would I just want to paint this image white? But um, I'm going to hit Control alt z to undo that. Oh, no I'm not because it's my first step so I'm just going to go back to the original image. Um, but anyway, um, why would I want to do that? Well, when you know more about layers, you'll you, it, that'll kind of come to you. But just to show you what a brush does, um, I can make it bigger or smaller using my right bracket key to make it bigger or left bracket key to make it smaller. I can also change the size over here if I want, bigger, smaller. 
I can change the hardness. Right now it is 100% on the hardness. If I take it all the way down to zero, the brush will be softer. And um, when I had it at 100%, it was the edges were very hard. So a lot to do there. Also, I can change the opacity. Right now it's 100%. If I want, you can put your cursor right here. When you see those arrows, you can just slide it down. Oh, that's so light I can't see it. Hang on one sec. There we go. And now it's very, very light. Um, if I keep painting, it'll get darker and darker. But you get the point. You can also change the opacity by clicking on this arrow and then using the slider. I just like this way because I think it's a little bit quicker. We're going to go back to the original image. Oh, let's see. The, the, the pencil tool, the color replacement tool, and the mixer brush tool aren't things that I really use in my photography. So we're just going to kind of skip over those. Now this is the clone brush. The clone brush is really cool. Um, I use this a lot for things like um, if I have a car in a spot that I, I don't want the car there. Uh, I'll show you how it works on this dog here. Now in this picture I did mean for the dog to be there, but we'll just pretend that we want to take the dog out. So what I'm going to do, it works a lot like the um, healing brush in that you choose your source, you hit Alt, you'll get the target, and you click. So what this tool is going to do is take this area here and copy it right over here to this dog. And voila, he's gone. Now you see how he started to come back here? See the cross off to the left of my circle? It's copying what was there, and that's why the dog was starting to come back. Let me see, let's start over here. I want to get, I want to show you that. So let me get a little closer to him. And there he is. He's starting to come back because it's just copying what was there. And so that's one thing you want to be careful of with the clone tool when you're trying to get rid of something that is. So we'll get that side of his leg and then we're going to come over here and alt click again and get rid of that side of him. Oh, there, he's gone. Pretty nifty tool. Now there's some things you can do to clean that up, but that's for another tutorial. That's just to show you what the clone stamp does. I've never really used the pattern stamp tool, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, this uh, history brush tool and art history brush tool aren't really things that I use as of right now either. The eraser tool, also another thing that comes more in handy with layers and things, but just erases and it's going to, um, when you don't have any layers selected, it's just going to erase to your background color, which in this case is black. So that's what that does. We'll go back to the beginning. And again, that's a function you'll understand more in the future. Paint bucket tool. Gradient tool I don't use a ton, um, but the paint bucket tool, and with templates, I use that a lot. Basically, Let's see, uh, we have white selected here as our foreground color. That, that'll work, because let's say I want to fill this black area in with white. I click, and there it is. That's what the paint bucket tool does. It'll take all of that color and fill it in with whatever your foreground color is. And actually, you can change that. You can make it a pattern if you want to. You can change the opacity as well. Um, say I just want to fill this in with, yeah, 41%. And there you go. Um, blur tool, sharpen tool, and smudge tool all do pretty much what they say. Um, let's do the smudge tool. Um, just like with the brush, right bracket, we'll make it bigger. And um, let's make the strength 100% just so you can really see what it does. And it takes a second to process that but it should smudge it pretty good for us so that we can see. Any day now. Well, that doesn't want to work for us very quickly, does it? The blur tool is just going to blur it and then the sharpen tool will sharpen it. Oh, there it goes, smudging. Wow, I smudged that a lot more than I thought. Apparently when you put it at 100%, that's pretty, pretty darn strong. This isn't something that I use very often in photography, 
Oh, see, and I moved it back. That's why it's going back there. But just to give you an idea of what it does, now, sometimes I will use the blur tool, which was the little raindropper thing. Um, like if I want to blur a background a little bit more, um, the only trick with that is not getting too close to your subject because you don't want to blur them. And usually I'll start off with like 20% opacity so that it um, isn't too strong to begin with. Wow, I really smudged that. <laughs> I did not realize that it would take this long to process. I apologize for that. Ah, we are done. Okay. Oh, let's take that back to the beginning. That is a little odd looking, isn't it? Okay, now we've got the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge tool. The dodge tool is just going to make things darker. Dodge is just a fancy word for dark. Or, I'm sorry. Dodge is a fancy word for brighten. <laughs> I apologize. It's late. Okay, burn tool. Now that will make it darker. So when you think of burn, um, like burnt edges, it'll be black, darker. We have our sponge tool. And that is set to desaturate right now, so that's just going to take some color out of him. You can also set it to saturate. We'll make it brighter, more saturated. That's not something I use very often either, but that's what it does. Uh, the pen, pool, pen tool and all of these aren't something I use very often at all. Text tool, now this is something I use quite a bit actually. Um, for people, um, if I do a shoot for a, a child, sometimes they want their name on the picture. So this is, this is where you would use that. You can change your um, font size. You can change your color. Black's good. Um, with some of the fonts, you can make them italic, semi-bold, all of those things. And you can change your, your font. So, and uh, to undo, you just click the layer and it takes away that box and there you go. If you want to move it, you can just click it again, and uh, you should get those little arrows here. There we go. And we can move it. We can make the box smaller around the letters. So yeah, pretty handy. I, I've never used these before, so we'll skip over that. Shape tool. Now this is kind of interesting. I don't use this a ton um, unless I'm making a logo. But let's just go to the custom shape. Oh, here we go. And let's say we want to make a heart. It'll actually create a layer, um, but it's going to fill it with the foreground color if that's what you have it set to. Or also, here, you can change the color here. But now you have that shape. So that's what the shape tool does. Uh, you can make a light bulb. Pretty nifty. Hand tool, I don't use a ton. Um, rotate hand tool, that's kind of interesting. You can uh, do that. Very interesting. Don't use it a lot, but that's what it does. And then you have your zoom and unzoom. But like I said, I really just use the control plus minus. Okay, down here are your colors. And um, you can switch them back and forth between foreground and background just by clicking these arrows or by hitting your X key on your keyboard. Um, the move tool, I don't use a ton, or, well I do use a ton but not with just one image. Um, let's say for some reason, I don't know why, but let's say I wanted to put this image on top of this image, I would just move it over. And that's what the move tool does. Let's put this back up here. And then I can move it all around if I want to. Marquee tool. And this will select an area in the shape that you pick. So um, if I've got it set on elliptical, well, it'll select a circle. Rectangle. It'll choose a rectangle. And there's all kinds of things you can do here. Um, let's see. You can select a bunch of different areas by clicking this button here, which is Add to Selection. 
I can take away from the selection by clicking on this here. So let's say I want to get rid of that, get rid of that. So you got rid of everything that I went around. If you want to ever unselect something, you just hit Control D and that'll take care of that. Lasso tool, this is also a selection tool. The magnetic lasso tool will try to outline things for you, which is kind of handy. And once you go all the way around something, I'm just going to kind of go quickly here. Oops. Once you've found your path, you can double click and, well, let me get it up here for you. There we go. Now we're selected. Comes in handy with some other things. But there's also the lasso tool, which you can just do any shape you want. This, the polygonal tool, basically you just make lines. And let's say I'm done, I just want it to go back to the source. There you go. I'm going to hit Control D to deselect. Magic Wand, this one's interesting. It'll actually select um, all of the color or uh, like the same color like this. It selected everything that was this exact color. I'm going to hit Control D to deselect. The Crop Tool, you can choose your ratio here and you just hold down on the right mouse key there and, and you would crop it. I have it set to show me the rule of thirds right now, but you can change that. You don't have to show anything. And I'm going to hit escape just to make it not do that. Um, the slice tool and slice select tool I don't really use a lot. Then we have our eyedropper tool. Um, that'll just select colors and it'll change your foreground color. So if I choose a shirt, it's green. Now if I ever want to switch um, the colors back to default, which is black and white, I just hit D and it takes it right back. Um, the color sampler tool, ruler tool, and note tool, I don't really use a ton. But I will use the note tool today to give you my email address, which is Aaron.Martin.Bitewiser at gmail.com. If you have any questions, you can email me anytime. So that was a basic run through of the tools here. Um, I hope that it helps at least to give you an introduction to Photoshop. And in the future, we will go over layers and actions. And we'll also be doing a tutorial on how to make a basic um, template. So if you've ever seen those templates um, where it has four pictures, um, I can show you a real fast and easy way to make one of those and keep it for the future. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a great day.